Hello everybody, welcome back to the Young Fan Podcast and welcome to the next chapter, the first episode of Season 2. I thought, where's the best place to start? Why don't we do a bit of a year flashback? We look uh, at Ox United's current transfer window, the current summer transfer window, of course, as we head into the first game of the season. Where are Ox United at when it comes to transfer business? Is the squad shaping up the way that we had intended? Is the squad good enough to be meeting the expectations of the fans? Who have we brought in? Who have we let go? And what are the rumours at the moment surrounding ins and outs? Everything to be discussed in this episode of the podcast. If you haven't subscribed and left a like and you're not excited for the next chapter, I've just, I am actually recording this the day before uh, the trailer for chapter two and sort of the introduction to the new chapter uh, is being released. If you're excited for it, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, both of which is free and easy. Can we hit 280 subscribers before the start of the season? That does give us three subscribers in about two weeks. I'm I'm, I'm really hoping we can do that. But, you know, if you, if, we, if you set your expectations a little bit lower, you can always then be uh, impressed and excited, I guess. So, where do we start? I think we're going to start with departures because we've had uh, three departures, all of which on permanent deals you have not yet loaned anybody out of significance so the three players we have sold for not money one of them two of them for actual underclothes fees the other one of course uh, refused to sign a contract he's gone to Huddersfield on a free and we'll start with him of course he's a bit of a club legend uh, being uh, Josh Ruffles uh, the left back of course Rockford United has been a left back for Rockford for quite a few years now Really proved to be a fantastic and crucial member of this Oxford United side and really is going to be missed, if I'm being honest. I think he's a man that, on and off the pitch, really, really holds great significance to this Oxford United side. Really, really like the look of him. And at left back as well, he really, really did prove to be, you know, he fit Carl, you know, he did fit Carl Robinson's uh, philosophy and style to an absolute T. Going forward, he was absolutely fantastic. I thought defensively as well, he was very, very good. Didn't have the best of playoffs against Blackpool, if you're being honest, over the two legs, but really, I think you could see that there was something behind closed doors, probably the transfer situation for him that maybe was not making him 100% focused, but generally you could see um, over the past few years what an important player he is, how how good he was for Oxford United, and he will really be missed, and we wish him all the best, and ultimately we, we, we sort of knew as, as it went on, as the contract negotiations were sort of slowly fizzling away, you could see the contract extension, that the new contract that we really hoped that Josh, Josh Ruffles would sign, and as a fan base we hoped he would do, it wasn't going to happen, it wasn't to be, and ultimately uh, that was the end of the road for Josh Ruffles at Oxford United, which is a real shame, it sounds strange to say, uh, but unfortunately that is the case, and Josh Ruffles now uh, will leave the club, and today uh, we'll come on to arrivals in a minute, we have finally replaced Josh Ruffles, but like I said, we'll come on to those arrivals in just a second, but Josh Ruffles has left the club, we wish him all the best, a great servant to the club, an amazing servant to the club, you certainly will be missed, Josh Ruffles. And then moving on to another defender that we've let go, and that's of course Rob Atkinson, he joins Bristol City for what is officially an underclosed fee, but we believe it is £1.6 million. We also believe there are some add-ons in there as well that maybe could benefit Oxford United in the long term. That could be a uh, sell-on percentage, maybe get 10% of the profit or 10% of the fee that Rob Atkinson and, and Bristol Rovers, uh, sorry, Bristol City, not Rovers, they're in our league. No, they're not. They got relegated. Bristol City uh, make um, but Bristol City make if they sell Rob Atkinson on in the future. Of course, that won't be on the forefront of their minds right now. They've just signed him. But I think we can really see with Rob Atkinson, he really has an exciting future ahead of him. And if that's at Bristol City for the long term, it might be. But I really think he, you know there's a really, really amazing player in there. And we wish him the best in the championship as well. Of course, he was a huge player for Oxford United uh, last season. £1.6 million for a player we had for a year, though. That, for me, seems good business as much as we're going to miss him. And as much as he was fantastic for Oxford United, £1.6 million for a defender that did only play one season for us. I can see that as financially good business. Is that going to affect Oxford United's squad and Oxford United's team? Of course, because he was a fantastic player, but we can't really dwell on it. We can't hold grudges against players and against the club for selling a player like that. He's a fantastic player, and of course we will certainly miss him. And finally then, we've got Sean Clare. He joins uh, Charlton on an underclosed fee. And this one was quite a strange one. We signed him last summer, actually, uh, as officially a right-back from Hearts. He played midfield. We sort of see him as more of a prominent midfielder at Hearts. He joined to be a bit of a right-back to, I guess, replace Chris Cadden, who we saw, who, who sorry, went back to America. He's now at... Um, He's now back in Scotland, but he left in January uh, of last season, or the season before last, because obviously that is now last season. Get the seasons all mixed up. We're now officially in the new season. And we need to play an attacking right-back to come into the side and, and really, I guess, 
offer, again, the player that Carbons is looking at, that right-back position, really, really attacking, a real threat going forward. And we thought Sean Clare, with the power, the height, the strength that he offered, he could be that man. It wasn't to be. He actually en ended up going out on loan to Burton. But what we could see, that in that midfield, he was a fantastic player. It wasn't to be. And it is a little bit annoying that we've seen uh, Sean Clare go for me because I think there could have been a player in there. However, it is looked, you know, it, Roy was looked at that, they need some fresh start, and there was a free fresh start that needed to happen for Sean Clare, and he moved to Charlton, who are divisional rivals, and that for me is a little bit frustrating. Selling players to, for teams like Charlton, I think, have aspirations like us to eventually get promoted back into. Uh, so, well, we've never been in the championship, but Charlton, and we'll want to get back into. Uh, we'll want to get to that league as quickly as possible. We want to get out of League One, of course. That's our aspirations, and that's quite difficult. But I think Sean Clare as well. We wish him the best. Didn't really work out Oxford United. I think he'll probably admit that as well. Maybe he did have, he could have had a future, but for me, I think Carl Robinson always hinted that it was probably best that it didn't work out the first time. Don't try it again, and hopefully we we will need to replace Sean Clare. I think he could have been a really really good player. Not maybe not definitely not a right back, but in the squad, I think he could have been a really really good player. But those are three departures: Sean Clare, Rob Atkinson, and Josh Ruffles. Three quite significant players, two of which were very significant last season. I think Sean Clare had potential to be a significant member of Oxford United. It's not to be he joins Charlton Athletic for an underclosed fee. However, with those departures and with hopefully some money that we've spent, that we've uh, that we've sold these players for, hopefully that does get brought back into the transfer budget that Carlson has to spend. We can bring some players in, and the first one, of course, is technically a summer signing. I don't really look at it as a summer signing, because we did sort of sign him before the summer transfer window opened, but it will count as this summer. And that, of course, was Marcus McGuane on an underclosed fee. Not really a summer signing, like I said, but he is a powerful midfielder. Certainly offers strength and power in that midfield. Great dribbling ability. Quite quick as well for a midfielder. Can also play on the left and the right side. Uh, almost wins as well. We've seen him play on the left wing a few times, but also in that midfield as well. He's fantastic. And that's why we'll see him play in that midfield. Do a great job, sort of really dictating the way that we play with the power he's got in there. And maybe that is what we talk about when we talk about power and aggression in midfield. Maybe Marcus McGuane was always going to be that man. Either way, he signed on an underclose fee from Nottingham Forest. And I'm excited to see more of Marcus McGuane. We probably know most about more about him than we do any of the other signings. But yeah, we look forward to seeing Marcus McGuane. I feel like when he, when he got injured last season, that's when we sort of seeing the best out of Marcus. But I feel, you know, I really, really hope that we can see more of him. He can stay fit. He can stay... Um, in good form, it can be a big part of Oxford United as we head into the next season. Next up then, that's Ryan Williams. He joined on a free uh, from Portsmouth. He did get offered a contract at Portsmouth. However, he decided to reject that new contract extension. Apparently, there were a few things in that contract uh, that would suggest that maybe he was on a lower wage and maybe his playing time would have you know, altered slightly. And for that reason, Ryan Williams decided he's not going to sign that contract extension. He's not going to stay at Portsmouth. He's not going to stay at Fratton Park. It's time for him to make a move. And he moved, of course, now to Oxford United. And, and I, you know, I'm excited by Ryan Williams. I saw him playing that that preseason friendly against Oxford City. I was lucky enough to go there and be very, very excited uh, to see the boys back in action. And lucky to see the likes of Ryan Williams. Um, really, really impressed. Generally, I thought there were moments where he could have done a little bit better. But again, you know, it's a preseason friendly. You're not as sharp. You're not as on it. But he did show sort of glimpses of quality. Um, and again, I think he's going to be a lively winger. I think he's going to be a lively player and really going to help Carl Robinson with that more, you know, with the more attacking options that he has. Again, I think it's a good addition to the squad as well. He really does boost those attacking options that Carl Robinson can select. He probably is looking at one or even maybe two more wingers to bring in still in the transfer market. But I think Ryan Williams is a good start. He's a free transfer, clearly League One proven. He may be a few doubts in, you know, in front of goal. Can he finish? Can he get the goal scoring numbers? Can he get the goal contributions that we want from our flanks and from our wingers? That's again something we're going to have the wait and see and from Portsmouth fans generally we're seeing maybe it's going to take a little bit of time for him to settle uh, again though he's 29 years old. I think he's 29 is he 30 years old so again he's in the good you know he's in the best stage of his career so hopefully we can see the best of Ryan Williams because he was at the club previously we've seen him in before when he was very very young quite a long time ago in Oxford United sure but again welcome our second transfer it's Ryan Williams on a free from Portsmouth and thirdly then, it's Billy Bodden on a free transfer from Preston North End. He was a free transfer. He was released by Preston. Again, he spent a large majority of the club at Preston with injuries, which again is a little bit worrying. We know what Carl Robinson and Oxford United have done a few times that have frustrated us as fans, and that's bringing players that 
are you know well known have quite long worrying injury records we don't want players with injury records it's obvious it sounds you know it sounds stupid but w- w- you'd be surprised Oxford United do tend to bring in players that do carry worrying injury records and then we don't really get to see the amazing side of the players because they send so much side on the touchline when they don't play then other players come in and then you don't want to change it too much because they've proven themselves and things like that a good example for me was Sam Winner last season he could have been our goal scoring number nine it sounds um, you know like it sounds like a strange thing to say you got Matt Matty Taylor, but at times Matty Taylor wasn't goal, you know, wasn't firing. Matty Taylor wasn't hitting the back of the net, and he wasn't in great form. Sam Winnell could have come in and taken that spot, and, and maybe gone on to being, you know, the, the 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 main number nine Oxford United. But because he was injured so much, and because he spent so much time not on the field with knocks and injuries, he could never take Matty Taylor's spot really. Because every time he sent to be two, he would send, every time he sent, you know, it, it turned out he was fit. Matty Taylor was scoring again, so that's quite difficult and quite frustrating. Hopefully, Billy Bodden will not be like that and hopefully Billy Bodden will see a more you know a fit size of Billy Bodden and one that we saw at Bristol Rovers that was the club he was at before he joined Preston and that's really where he impressed he looked very very good for Bristol Rovers and I was looking at some clips and some videos, which is never what you should do when you're looking at players, really. You can do it, but it's never a great, great way to get the best uh, best look at these new players. But I did look at some of the clips, and he did look very, very good in a Bristol Rovers shirt. So hopefully, if he can stay fit, he can replicate that sort of form for Oxford United. We can only hope, and I think he really is a good addition. I believe he's about 30 as well, similar to Ryan Williams. So again, he's in sort of the, the peak of his career. I believe he's had a two-year contract as well. So that'll be interesting. Hopefully, we see a good start of Billy Bodden, like I said, I think he's a great addition to the squad. Wingers are quite difficult to recruit, you never know what you're going to get with a winger, but generally, hopefully we get a successful signing, and again, welcome to the club, Billy Bodden. He joins on a free after being released by Preston, and he's joining the squad this season. And finally then, that leaves our final signing, and the signing we actually uh, got over the line today. Now apparently this was a signing that has been dragged out for about three weeks, uh, but it is a very, very impressive one, and one that I certainly think is the most impressive signing of the summer, and that is Steve Seddon. Okay, he joins from Birmingham City, and when I first read it, and when I first saw the rumours and things like that, quite close to it being announced, I won't lie, these rumours came quite late, so there were quite a few left backs we've been linked to, and this one came quite late uh, as it was going to be announced, but when I first saw it, I thought this was going to be a loan, I th- it felt like a loan sort of deal, because he was out on loan to AFC Wimbledon twice, he's been a loan to Portsmouth few, uh, once as well, and again, he's 23 years old from a, uh, from a championship club, and when you're selling players, you know, from championship clubs, you know, that's quite rare to see. Especially at 23 years old, loaning players like that it is quite common. Selling players at 23 from championship clubs, that's quite rare. And when it got announced and it was a permanent deal under close feet on a three-year contract, that, that excites me. That really does excite me. I think he's a really, really good player. I think that is our Josh Ruffles replacement. I know there was quite a few options. Could it be uh, Jamie Robson uh, from Dundee? He looked like he was going to go to Ipswich or Oxford. It looks like that may be something that out of our control. Maybe we're going to go with Steve Sedden the whole time. Thinking that it's been a three-year, th- sorry, not three-year, three-week uh, deal that's tried to drag on suggests that maybe we were thinking of doing this for quite a while. Maybe we linked with him and wanted him from the beginning. Beginning, I don't know, but he looks to be a really good player, very good going forward, a really good attacking fullback, really fits Carlson's style. I like the look of that, really excited. We finally got our Josh Ruffles replacement at left back, so excited. And you've got to take your heart, uh, you know, take your hat off at Oxford United there. For me, that's a really, really good, almost statement sign. We're here to, we know, we're here to buy players. We're not here just to loan everyone in. We're here to buy players. And so far, the four signs we have brought in have all been on permanent deals. I mean, the only one we've officially bought, the two players we've officially bought of course, and Marcus McGuane and Steve Seddon. However, the other two were free transfer. But it's two players we've actually, you know, given money to, to the opposite, you know, given money to other clubs and we've actually bought for transfer fees, which is, you know, a good thing in terms of it means we're actually, you know, we mean business really in, in both ways. So really, really happy about that. In terms of what next and the different ways of looking um, at the priorities of, of the next look at the transfer business, I'm looking at another winger. I'm looking at Gavin White. That would be a really good addition. I know he's out on loan at Hull City last season, uh, and he you know, won them the league with, with with Hull City. He was a very, very good player. We stole him, actually, from Car- to Cardiff City a few years ago now. He was always a really good player. I love Gavin White. I'd love to have him back. Apparently, both parties, apparently that deal does have some legs. I look forward to seeing if that does develop. I'd love to see Gavin White back at the club, if not 
not though a winger at least would be very very good if not two to add to those attacking options we need for the start of the season another centre back of course we do need to replace Rob Atkinson uh, Boyle from Cheltenham is the big link he looks to be a really good player very different to the likes of McNally Atkinson Dickey the players we sort of recruited there he looks to be you know you know a good stage in his career very different stage to career to, to the other two the other three I've just mentioned there from Cheltenham apparently that deal also has legs that is a centre back we're looking to put next to Elliot Moore next season apparently that's something the that Carlson wants to do so that's very exciting hopefully uh, we can sign uh, Boyle he's my number one choice for a centre back however there are a few others that can play of course in that centre back position hopefully they can be successful signings and then finally really I'm looking at another centre midfielder maybe even replacing Sean Clare it's weird because we didn't see him play in midfield but I think that's what we need that's the sort of player we want a powerful midfielder maybe Marcus McGuane's the answer so maybe go something different that is the bottom of my list that is my least priority uh, on my priority list of signings this summer another winger at least or at least one maybe even two and certainly another centre back as well the camera's just died I do apologise ladies and gentlemen this has been the Unfan Podcast take care stay safe hopefully you've enjoyed leave a like and subscribe I've been Jack this has been the Unfan Podcast and I'll see you in a bit take care